This is the Sony A95K, the premium QD OLED of the year. And this is the Samsung S95B, maybe the budget QD OLED of the year. But which one should you buy? Well, in this video, we'll be doing extensive head-to-head -head comparison and looking at the reasons why one or the other is the better purchase. Don't forget to hit the red button to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up and click the notification bell to get my next video first. So let's address the big elephant in the room. For the price of one Sony A95K, you can purchase two Samsung S95Bs. Or perhaps you'd rather get the larger Samsung S95B, a PS5, and have loads of cash left over. So this is a massive consideration, and I will give you my final thoughts on that matter at the end of this video. So let's get started with a physical comparison. First of all, let's take a look at the connections on the back of these TVs. The Samsung, in my opinion, wins this hands down. There are four HDMI 2.1 ports, all supporting 4K at 120. Whereas on the Sony, there are just two supporting that. And one of those is the eARC port. So if you are wanting to connect a second console or a console plus a high-end PC, then you're going to have to not use the eARC port. You can use the speaker on the Sony as a central speaker, and I'll come onto the sound test a little bit later, so that's a nice feature on the Sony. Now, the build quality on the Sony is far superior to the Samsung. Every single thing about it just exudes quality. It's really firm, it's very rigid. That screen is not gonna bend at all. This has got an incredible weight to it. I do think the stand design is a step back from last year's A90J, and I'll cover that when I do my full review. It sits so low that you cannot get a soundbar under it. Having the stand at the back means that the TV will lean back slightly, but if you want to avoid that, then you can this year put the stand at the front and it will sit perfectly upright. Although I prefer it at the back because I don't particularly like the look of the stand. The build quality on the Samsung feels a lot cheaper, a lot more plasticky, and it's so thin on that screen, which is great to look at, but it does result in a lot of people reporting bending of the screen. Now, I've just noticed this on my screen recently. It's not a massive deal. It doesn't affect the picture, but if I'd noticed that, if it was like that at the start, and I recommend that you all check, then it would have gone straight back. The stand looks like it's metal, but it's made of plastic, but on the plus side, it's a few centimeters off the ground, so you will be able to get most soundbars underneath. Now, both of these TVs come with two remote controls. There's the ugly sister type, which is the older fashioned with all of the buttons, and there's the far smarter type. Now, the Samsung has a solar panel and a USB-C charging port, so there's no battery, and you probably won't need to charge it very often. But the Sony one is incredible. It's such a premium product, feels amazing, and it's backlit, which is a really nice touch. Having that higher stand means that the TV sits a few centimeters, approximately six centimeters higher than the Sony. The bezels are almost identical on both. Both the top and the sides are almost identical, just a few millimeters thick, and it looks fantastic. Both of these TVs deliver incredible picture quality and brightness at the most extreme viewing angles. I don't think there's really a winner here. They both look incredible. It's quite amazing how bright they are from such an extreme angle. Reflection handling on both TVs is good, certainly better than the LG models this year, but I definitely think it's better on the Sony. It just dampens that reflection about 10% more. Now, both TVs look great when the TV's on, and you don't notice the reflection to any great degree. Okay, so let's now look at picture quality. Now, with the Sony, it does come, as it's a Master Series TV, it does come with a degree of calibration already done. However, I did put it into custom mode, and I did make some tweaks, which I'll go through when I do my full review. With the Samsung, I've still got it in filmmaker mode, and I've got the settings that I changed, which you can see in a previous settings video that I've done on it. So I do have a favorite, and I'll come on to that in just one second, but certainly both of these TVs deliver just the most exceptional picture. Now, without them being side by side, you would look at them and just think, amazing. I do think, however, that this Sony with its color accuracy and the way that it processes the image just gives a slightly better, but not brighter, picture than the Samsung. In some scenes, like what we're seeing here, the brightness looks fantastic, but it doesn't always deliver the best image. 
So here, for instance, this is the cat on the Samsung S95B, and this is the cat on the Sony A95K. If I put them side by side, although the Samsung is clearly brighter, I think the more natural and actually the better image is the Sony. Do you agree? For the majority of scenes, it just comes down to a little bit of brightness on the Samsung, and that is very noticeable. But again, I wouldn't necessarily say it's delivering the better image. It's delivering the brighter image, but my preference is still towards the Sony. However, there are a couple of areas where each one of these TVs comes into its own and is definitely far better than the other one. But what's your thoughts? Do you prefer the brightness difference or do you prefer the tone difference? Because this is the key difference between the two for the majority of these scenes. But what I would say is it's exceptional how Samsung have delivered this TV at the price they have. One thing that I did notice quite regularly on the Samsung is that you do lose some of the detail in the highlights. If you look at this freeze frame of the elephant, for instance, the extra detail on the Sony is very noticeable. And actually, you're not losing that much in the shadows. Now, in this test here, I'm checking to see how well the TVs do at replicating a source image. In the middle at the bottom there is the source file of a video I made a few weeks ago on this LG speaker. And the two images, left is the Sony, right is the Samsung. And I do think that the Sony, again, does a better job at replicating that image. Both of them look great, but when we go to this shot, for instance, the Sony is almost identical to the source image, certainly in tone and everything. And maybe that extra brightness on the Samsung is pushing it out a little bit. Certainly, it's nothing to do with the color temperature because that has been set in exactly the same way as normal. Whilst we're on this video, it's a good opportunity for me to give you a sound demonstration of the two speakers built into the TVs. Both are excellent. One is far better. Let's get started. and I'm sure you'll know straight away which one's the best. So I've recorded some sound coming from the speaker and this is how it sounds. So I've recorded some sound coming from the speaker and this is how it sounds. So I'm sure that you'll agree with me that the Sony is head and shoulders above the Samsung. However, they both on their own sound pretty good. One area where the Samsung was head and shoulders above the Sony was on gaming. It was so, so different. The Samsung with its extra brightness in the actual panel just really uses every single nit of that brightness to deliver the most incredible punchy image. Now in reality what you're looking at now is a slightly accentuated version. It didn't look as bad as this with the naked eye sat opposite but it definitely was remarkably noticeable how different and how much brighter the Samsung was. One thing that I would add to this, though, is that still with the lack of brightness, the Sony did seem a little bit more natural. So if we take this next clip, for instance, from Call of Duty, and you look at what is on the left compared to what is on the right, yes, without a doubt, the Samsung is brighter, but the one that probably looks the most realistic to me, and again, this is what I found no matter what I put through the TVs, certainly was the Sony. The Sony obviously supports Dolby Vision, and it's clearly noticeable when you're streaming, for instance, from Netflix. Anything with Dolby Vision just looks incredible on the Sony TV, and it's just so noticeable how good it is compared to the Samsung. Samsung has HDR10, but it just isn't anywhere as near as good as the Sony. It's the difference between night and day, literally. So this is something which if you are watching a lot of this type of content, then you really do need to bear it in mind. Don't get me wrong, take the Sony One away and the Samsung still looks good, but it's just not comparable. Before I give you my final thoughts, my summary and which TV would I buy, 
The other thing to mention is the software on both of these TVs. The Sony has Google TV, which works fantastically, and the Samsung has the Tizen software, which is an updated version of Tizen software this year, and it does have to be said it's a little bit clunky in places. It has got recently better in the last couple of updates, but there are times where it seems to stutter and lag and can be a little bit frustrating. Both of them are over bloated with things that you just don't need, and I really wish you could have the choice to either take these things off or leave them on there if you wanted them. Both of these TVs have excellent settings controls where you can go in and make changes to your heart's content. You can go into the finest details and make incredible minute changes. I guess the Sony again just edges that because it has more, but the Samsung is a very, very close second. So right at the very start of this video, we addressed the elephant in the room, which was the price. The fact that you can get two S95Bs for the same price as an A95K, or even a PS5 and have cash left over. So, I think we've established during the course of this video that the Sony is the better TV. But which TV should you buy? Well, I think if you're a gamer, then it's definitely the Samsung S95B. If most of your content is gaming, then it's a no-brainer. If you watch most things on Netflix and streaming services and Dolby Vision content, then it's the Sony, without a doubt. But be prepared to pay the Sony tax. Because what I would say, without any question, any shadow of a doubt, is that the differences between the two certainly don't justify the differences in price. The Samsung S95B, as I said in the thumbnail, I just find it incredible that they can deliver this at the price that they're selling it for. It's exceptional. And in so many ways, it's very, very close. And in some occasions, better. The extra brightness that you get with it is fantastic. It's not always giving you the better picture, but it's certainly giving you the brightest picture. And in terms of value for money, well, there's only one clear winner. So for me, gamers, S95B, Dolby Vision content, Netflix, that type of thing, it's the Sony. But if you're just looking for an exceptional TV and cash is important to you, then get the Samsung. That's it for this video, my friends. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments, and I look forward to seeing you on the next review.